All right, rolling on through the ECG course, still in level one. We're in the measurements unit. So we're in the second half here in the measurements unit. We're going to talk about the QRS in this lesson. We just talked about PRI. Upcoming is QTC. QRS lesson is an important one because QRS width is something that we look at quite a bit. We told you to remember two numbers, 120 and 200. For QRS width, 120 is the only one to worry about. For PRI, it's short if it's less than 120. It's long if it's more than 200. For a QRS, it's considered wide if it's 120 milliseconds or more. Three little boxes. So QRSs are either normal or wide. Um, <clears throat> and I think we tend to use the, the term narrow when we really mean to say normal or not wide. So <clears throat> no such thing as a short QRS, but there is a normal, which is up to 120, and then it's wide when it's more than that. What could cause that? Well, several things. Most commonly, it's an impulse that came out of the ventricles. So the QRS is wide because the impulse did not go through the normal conduction system. It went cell to cell to cell in the ventricles. A ventricular pacing site fired, and the impulse was spread cell to cell to cell, which is slow compared to going through the normal conduction pathway through the AV node, AV junction, uh, his bundle, the, bran the branches, and the Purkinje's. This came from cell to cell to cell, so an impulse that came out of the ventricles, maybe a PVC. <clears throat> if you remember back to the ectopics lesson, we were talking about PVCs are wide. Well, it's because they come out of the ventricles and the impulse goes cell to cell. It could also be a bundle branch block, and we'll talk more about that later, but basically uh, the conduction system, you remember, comes through the AV node through the bundle of his, and the bundle of his branches into bundle branches, and there can be blocks in there, a block in the conduction system down low where we have a bundle branch block. It could also be that this wide QRS happened because of that accessory pathway, that bypass track. We talked about that briefly in the PRI lesson. We'll talk about it more in its own specific lesson. But basically the insulating area between the atria and the ventricles is supposed to force that, comp that impulse through the AV node but what if there's a short circuit wire, um, a conduction pathway that grew across um, the insulating fibrous stuff there between the atria and the ventricles? And so then that QRS impulse would uh, be initiated up high in a ventricle and would go cell to cell to cell instead of through the normal bypass, through the normal uh, conduction system. So a bypass track could be the cause. And the last two are. It could be something where you have too much potassium, you have hyperkalemia. Or it could also be from certain medications that are over-medicated or overdosed, and the tricyclic antidepressant poisoning. <clears throat> we'll talk about those briefly here at the end. And uh, it used to be a lot of folks took these, and then the new versions came out with Prozac and Paxil and Zoloft and all those, and the tricyclics kind of you know, took a second seat, and now they're starting to come back a little bit. Plus, they're used for all kinds of other stuff. So tricyclics are out there. They're used for migraine prevention. They're used for uh, anxiety and for uh, promoting sleep and all kinds of things. And so the tricyclics will cause that wide QRS. Mostly, think about it is that it came out of the ventricles, or it was aberrantly, aberrantly conducted. There was a bundle branch block, or there was a bypass an accessory pathway. Think of it as those, but then remember hyper-K and tricyclics, and actually of all five of those, uh, hyperkalemia might be the most deadly of them all. So, Which lead do you look for in QRS width? Well, it's going to vary in different leads, and you use the lead with the widest QRS. And so three little boxes in any lead of a 12 lead would indicate a wide QRS. Now, you know, I, I think you trust the 12 lead machine for a couple of things, and you don't trust it for some other things. But one thing you can trust it for is to measure. It's digital calipers. It doesn't get it wrong. And so as a practical matter, most of us will simply let the 12 lead machine do the measurements, and we just read the measurements off the printout from the 12 lead. And the number you're looking for is 120. Again, the causes, if it came out of the ventricles, maybe it was a PVC. Maybe the SA node and the AV junction and all the pacemakers approximately north of the ventricles in the uh, conduction system. Maybe all of those are failing to work. And so it's an idioventricular rhythm or a ventricular escape rhythm, same thing. 
It's an escape rhythm because you're escaping a funeral. So it's the idioventricular rhythm. The SA node didn't fire, the junction and everything else didn't fire, and the ventricles said, well, we're not ready to die today, so they started firing, and that produces a wide complex because the impulse came from the ventricles. So, you know, it might be an extra beat of PVC, it might be a good thing, an escape rhythm coming out of the ventricles, or it might be VTAC. It might be several PVCs getting together in a row, and two in a row is a couplet, three in a row is a triplet, four in a row is a short run of VTAC, and that could, you know, continue on, and so it could be that it's VTAC. Here's some PVCs, those are wide, they are ugly, and they come out of the ventricles. And the reason they are wide is because the impulse started in one ventricle and it went cell to cell to cell to cell to the other ventricle. The two ventricles did not contract, did not depolarize, did not depolarize at the same time. And so the QRS is wide. Ordinarily we'd like both ventricles to depolarize and fire at the same time and that makes the QRS relatively narrow. But if it's coming out of the ventricles it could be wide. Here's an idioventricular rhythm. At the top, it's pretty fast. It's an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. The second strip and the third strip and the fourth strip are more common rates. Those are wide, not pretty complexes. There's no P wave. And those are idioventricular rhythms or ventricular escape rhythms. And then this is, should be scary. This is VTAC. VTAC can have a pulse. It can have a pulse for five seconds or five minutes or five hours or it can not have a pulse. Basically, whether it has a pulse or not is determined by how fast it is. If your ventricles are contracting so fast they don't have time to fill, they're not going to be able to eject any blood. There's a little tip for you to keep in mind as we move forward um, with managing patients and in the, in the actual uh, classroom part of the paramedic course. Rate really matters. And VTAC at 180 to 200 is probably not going to have a pulse. VTAC at 150 or 160 might have a pulse. But anyway, VTAC is VTAC and it looks ugly. Now, just because those are wide complexes doesn't make it VTAC. It could be that it's something else. But VTAC is the thing that kills people, so we're going to always worry about it being VTAC. Hey, what is one of the something else's? Well, it could be a bundle branch block. Remember, that atrial impulse is, goes through the AV node, the AV junction of the bundle of his. The bundle splits into two branches. What if one of those has a block or a delay? Or the impulse does not make it down the normal conduction system and the ventricles end up, um, one ventricle ends up contracting, depolarizing, and that impulse then spreads cell to cell to cell to cell to cell to the other ventricle. A wide QRS results from a long ventricular depolarization time where it takes a long time to get all the cells to depolarize and that gives you that wide QRS. <clears throat> we use a bundle branch block. Bundle branch block could be something with a bundle um, but aberrant or aberrant depending on how you want to say it, depending on where you're from. Uh, aberrant conduction uh, is another term. It means the same thing as a bundle branch block more or less. And uh, we sometimes agree that with a, you know, either AC or A slash C. What it means is it's not normal. It's abnormal abnormal aberrant conduction. The other thing that can cause another thing, the third thing that we like to list in our top three, things that can cause a wide QRS, besides it came out of the ventricles or it was aberrantly conducted, abnormally conducted to the ventricles, it could be an accessory pathway. Again, we've hit this a couple of times, but there's supposed to be insulation between the atria and the ventricles. The impulse is supposed to go through the AV node and the AV junction. But this bypass short circuit uh, connecting tissue grew in there and now that impulse jumps over from the atria directly to the ventricles and the ventricles um, depolarize cell to cell to cell which then gives us a much slower conduction. We really want that impulse going down the conduction wires. When it goes cell to cell that's much slower. And so then you get the ventricles depolarized in different times which gives you the wide QRS. Other causes, and again, hyper-K is potentially the most dangerous of all those. I think VTAC is pretty scary, but hyperkalemia uh, can be deadly as well. We'll do a whole thing in level two on hyper-K. Uh, you will learn during the cardiac arrest 
um, training where we talk about listing the causes of the cardiac arrest and five of them begin with H and five begin with T. One of the things that begins with H is the kalemia, is hypo or hyper kalemia. So a high level of potassium will cause that QRS to be wide and that has to do with electrolytes and how they work in the depolarization of cells and so higher levels of K uh, in the blood cause you some problems. And then the last one was the TCAs. The uh, most common ones out there that we're seeing these days are amitriptyline and nortriptyline. A lot of folks take those for sleepers or they take them for migraine prevention and then they're working their way back in um, to some treatment for some causes of, of depression and such. The problem with TCAs initially was that a toxic dose uh, was so low that a month's worth of prescription to keep you therapeutic and have the effect you want from the TCA, the reduction in your depression or whatever else, the, a, a bottle with a month's worth of pills contained a lethal dose. So these were um, scary and difficult and you could just watch on these overdose patients, you would watch the QRS start at a certain width and get wider and wider and wider and eventually kind of the same as, as uh, hyperkalemia. Eventually it gets so wide that you can't even see that it's a QRS, it just kind of looks like a sine wave if you know what that is. So five causes of wide QRS and a wide QRS is defined as a QRS width of 120 or more so three little boxes or more let your EKG machine measure that five causes three of them we worry a lot about <clears throat> and then there's these other two it could be from the ventricles it could be aberrantly abnormally conducted to the ventricles with a bundle branch block it could be an accessory pathway a bypass uh, an extra wire that grew in there um, and takes that impulse and lets it bypass the whole AV node and that normal pause system. It could be hyperkalemia or it could be a TCA overdose. Wide QRS, 